Hello GED students, it's GED question of the daytime, and I've been wanting to do this series here on polynomials um, because students often think this is some kind of new math that they haven't learned, but this is actually something that we've been looking at a lot, even though the language looks a little different. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Um, directions say find the sum of the polynomials, and hopefully by now, you guys all know that sum means the answer when you add. And you might be thinking, well, oh my gosh, what's a polynomial? Um, a polynomial is just a multi-termed algebraic expression, basically. I mean, that's the simplest explanation that I have for it. So we've seen these um, algebraic expressions before, and what I mean by multi-term is they have more than one thing adding or subtracting. So like here's a polynomial, it's got three terms, one, two, three. Here's another polynomial, it also has three terms, one, two, three. And they're asking me to find the sum of these. So even though the directions say find the sum of the polynomials, these directions aren't telling us anything that's not already right here in the problem. I can see that what I'm doing here is adding these two ugly algebraic expressions. Now I've got good news and bad news about this problem. We'll start with the bad news because you're probably already hyperventilating and vomiting. As students look at a problem like this and they go, it's disgusting, it's horrible, it's terrible, I'll never be able to do this, it looks like visual vomit, I hate algebra, and then they go home and cry. So that's the bad news. The good news is this problem is so flipping easy. It is so simple if you understand one really super important thing about addition, not even about algebra, about addition. And that is we've only ever been able to add and subtract the same kinds of things. This applied to us way back in um, elementary school when we did word problems and we added apples with apples and oranges with oranges. It applied to us when we learned about um, adding multi-digit numbers. And we said, like, if you were going to add 216 and 34, then you would line it up like this so that the ones added with the ones and the tens added with the tens and so on and so forth. So the same thing is going to happen in this problem, okay? Now in algebra, the same kinds of things are known as like terms. So that's how it plays out here. So you may have heard the phrase combining like terms. That's all we were talking about. We were saying you can only add the same kinds of things. Okay, bearing that truth in mind, let's see what we can actually do in this problem, okay? Now, the first thing I want you to know is these parentheses here, they're grouping these all these terms, but are they doing anything besides grouping? Notice how there's no number shoved out front. There's no exponent out here on the back. Well, the only thing this parentheses is doing is grouping, and grouping does not matter in addition. And so I can just drop these parentheses with no consequences. You guys have probably heard of this property at some point in your mathematical career. Um, it has a name. It's called the associative property. But it doesn't matter if you know that name at all or not. You should know that if there's nothing going on outside your parentheses in front, no exponent on the back that all your parentheses is doing is grouping. Grouping doesn't matter when you add. And so I can just drop the parentheses with no consequences. Those parentheses were totally unnecessary. Okay? And so that is all I did. I just got rid of parentheses. And now I will do the only addition we can do in algebra. The only addition we can do in algebra is combine like terms. We can add together the same kinds of things. So let's take a look at the first term here. The first term I have here is an x cubed term. The number in front, the coefficient 2, tells me how many x cubes I have. I have two of this thing, this x cubed thing. Now take a look at these other terms. Do you have any other x cubed terms? An x with a little 3 floating on it. Well, of course we do not. So none of these other terms are like terms. And so there is nothing that will add with x cubed. x cubed will just drop. Okay, now um, I like to combine terms in order of descending exponent, meaning I'm going to work with the largest exponent first and then I'll go on to the next largest. So after threes, 
um, are two. So I'm going to look at this term next. Now this term's a little tricky because there's two signs in front of it, plus a negative 3x squared, plus a negative 3x squared. Now I'm a mathematician, so um, I won't use both of those signs when I go to do my math uh, because I like things nice and simple. Why use two signs when one sign will do? But I'm still looking for anything that will combine with 3x squared or negative 3x squared. Do you see any other terms that are x squared terms, x with a little 2 floating on them? No, of course you do not. And so there is nothing that will combine with that term either. And so all it's going to do is just drop. Now notice, I know that adding a negative is just the same as a minusing. So I write negative 3x squared. If you don't know that, that's a useful thing to know. You need to know that adding a negative is the same as subtracting. Okay, so I just write negative 3x squared. Okay, next thing. Um, I'm out of exponent 3, exponent 2. Now it's time to move on to the exponent 1, which we sometimes call the invisible exponent. So I can see I have this term. It has a minus in front, so this is negative 3x. Notice how I pick up the sign in front. Now this one does have a like term. Take a look over here. It's not the only x term in this problem. There's another x term plus 5x. So I can combine those, negative 3x plus 5x. And you might say, well, what in the world? How am I going to combine the algebra, combine x's? You don't do the x's. You just do the numbers. It's like saying I owe you three apples. X could be anything. So, or I owe you three dollars. So let's imagine that x stood for dollars. If I owe you three dollars, that's what negative three x would mean. I owe you. And then I get five dollars. I've got positive five dollars and I start paying down what I owe you. I'm going to be able to pay off all three dollars and I'm still going to have two dollars left in my pocket. I'm going to have, so that'll be positive, two and two what? Well, two x's. I was adding and subtracting x's. Just like when you add and subtract dollars, you still have dollars. Okay, so notice that the x doesn't change and you just combine the numbers. Great, now I'm almost done. The last thing you should deal with after you've dealt with all your x terms um, is to deal with your constants, your plain old numbers. And you can see I have two constants here. I have a plus 17 and I have a negative 8. So this is like I have $17, but I take away 8. 17 minus 8 would be positive 9. So I write plus 9. Notice that all my answers are terms, so they all have to have a plus or minus sign in front of them. We can see we have a plus 9, a plus 2x, a minus 3x squared. And you might say, Kate, this one doesn't have a plus or minus in front of it. That's because when something is the leading term and it's positive, leading term meaning it's in front, you can just drop the plus sign. We know that a number that doesn't have a plus or minus is just a positive. Great. So um, this is my final answer. So these problems are not hard because you barely have to do any work at all. Basically, you only combine if there's something to combine it with. What, if not, you just drop the number down um, and just don't even change it. And so that's what freaks students out. They think, oh my gosh, I have to do more work. There's something I have to do from here. No. The smart mathematician knows when he's done. When you have no more like terms, you can no longer combine. This is a final answer. As funky as it looks, you've got to learn to just sit with it. <laughs> okay, so um, you might say, well, what's my final answer? It's 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x plus 9. That is as much math as I can do here, and so I call this problem done. If you have any questions about this problem, be sure to message me. Um, I would love to answer you um, and try to work out what you're struggling with.